Hello guys, in today's episode we're gonna discuss the most popular editions of Kamunda, the embedded edition and the standalone edition. The first one is to embed the Kamunda engine into your service, while the other one would be to run it as a standalone and independent instance. Since both of them have their ups and downs, in this video we will try to dive into both solutions and we will discuss their technical aspects as well as their business implications. First, let's start with the standalone edition. To be able to run it in your local environment, simply Google Kamunda BPM Run. The first article that you will be prompted with is the one that you want to go for. Here you will find the thorough description of the tool itself, as well as an instruction on how to get it running on your local instance. Once you download the zipped Kamunda BPM Run, just go to the directory of the unzipped file. Here you will find several files that are a part of the whole distribution. To run the application you need to open up a command line and in the command line just simply type start.bat. As you can see this will trigger the engine to launch and by default you should be able to access the engine on localhost.8080. The configuration is pretty easy and you can change almost everything regarding the server in the application.yml file. So for instance you can change the port to let's say 8086 and now let's rerun the application. And if you go back to the browser, you can see that it is available on a different port. So this solution is an approach where, from a technical point of view, it is not required to have any Java knowledge whatsoever. It is an out-of-the-box solution that runs as a separate network service. The remote applications present in this architecture can communicate with the process engine through built-in REST API or different channels like SOAP web services or even JMS. Although, this would require some custom implementation by the engine users. Let's jump into the embedded edition now. To make our life a little bit easier, let's go to the Kamunda initializer. This application works very similar to the Spring Boot initializer, although it gives you a possibility to generate your Spring Boot application, enhanced with all necessary Kamunda dependencies, reducing the effort in setting up of your local environment. Once you configure your application, simply click Generate Project and the downloading will start. Once it's completed, unzip the project and open it up with your favorite code editor. As you can see, what was generated is a simple template for a Spring Boot application. Now let's try to run it and see what happens. By default, the Spring Boot application will be launched on localhost.8080 and if you go there, you will see a Kamunda interface. That's how simple it was to embed a Kamunda engine into the Spring Boot application. This approach is highly scalable and extremely easy to integrate with a Spring Boot application, even if it's already live in production. All it takes is just to include necessary dependencies and perhaps some configuration in the properties of your service. This solution might also feel more natural to Java and Spring Boot developers. Both approaches will provide necessary Kamunda capabilities like web apps, the core, which is an engine, REST API and others. From the application point of view, the embedded edition is a set of libraries that plays along with Spring Boot very nicely. It is also used whenever you want a single deployment with an engine. Since it allows developers to query the Kamunda engine directly using Java API, the development effort is very low and it presents no class loading restrictions. On the other hand, the standalone is a remote server which could be applicable to the architectures that are not dependent on Java. Also, it does not give you a possibility to touch the core of the engine, as well as for the security reasons, the platform will be standing on the site of the already existing services. This separate installation allows you to be at an advantage, but it also can cause tremendous amount of technical issues like security itself or the whole DevOps process, since it requires taking care of deployment and maintenance. The development effort is also quite low, but despite this fact, it still has some limitations. Probably the most important factor while introducing Kamunda to your infrastructure would be the way you want to orchestrate your processes and the complexity of the communication with the engine itself. That's the end of this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next tutorial, we will discuss the basics of processes handling in both of these approaches.